So here we have a bar chart and it shows the ages of children who took part in a survey. How many children took part in the survey? So you have to examine the bar chart, right? You have to look at the X and Y axis or the horizontal and vertical axis and see what it's telling you. The key thing is, how, question is, how many children took part in the survey? So where would you look? Would you look on the horizontal axis or would you look on vertical axis? Horizontal mean left to right? Vertical. The vertical, right. Because the vertical has the number of children. Then you're going to count each bar and uh, see how, and, and take the measurement for each bar using the vertical axis. 15, okay. All right. Anybody else? Of age four, right? All right, so we have three persons plus what else? Of age five, how many persons of age five took part in the survey? Four. Age six, how many? Two. Uh, age seven, how many children? Five. And age eight, how many? One. Right, so that's three plus four is seven, plus two is nine, plus five, 14, plus one, 15. All right, so the answer is, the answer is B, B. Let's move on to question 47. Each of the lit the letters in the word chance is written on a slip of paper and one slip is randomly drawn. What is the probability of drawing a letter C? So remember what probability is, right? Something out of something, right? I have C. C, okay. So the probability of drawing a C? C. Is equal to? All right, so drawing a C. How many C's do we have in the word chance? How many C's do we have in the word chance? We have two, two C's, right? So that's going to be two. Two out of how many letters? Six. Six letters. And then we have to simplify it. So when you're simplifying it, we're going to divide the top and bottom by the same number. So we divided two by two and six by two. That gives us one over three. All right, I could see why someone would select um, D because they're looking at the fact that we have two C's as the numerator. And they're thinking, okay, it's two out of six. So that six is going to be simplified to a three. But remember, the two has to be simplified as well. So it's actually um, D. The two over six gets simplified to one third. All right, so just keep that in mind. All right, well, good, good effort. Appreciate the comments as well. That's really nice. Um, let's look at 48. Let's look at 48. The highest weekly wage of a group of employees is $105.40. If the range of the wages is $27.50. How much does the lowest paid employees receive? So you have to remember the formula for range, right? To get the range, it's going to be the highest minus the lowest. The range is the highest minus the lowest, okay? So what's the highest? What's the highest that we have? Well, this says the, the highest weekly wage of a group of employees is this amount, $105.40. What's the lowest? We don't know, right? But when we subtract these, we will get what? We'll get $27.50. That, that's what we call the range. The highest take away the lowest. So what would the lowest have to be? Such that when we take it from $105.40, we get $27.50. So now you might be saying, okay, let me do the calculation. But let, let us try this though. Let's eliminate. Can 105 $105.40 minus $105.40 give a 27? Is A is A is A the answer? Can A be the answer? Can A be the lowest? Can A be the lowest? Yeah. No. No. Because if A is the lowest, then it's gonna be $105.40 minus itself. Which would be zero. So that's that's out. Okay? Again, guys, you have to read the question carefully. Don't worry about a lot of words. It says the highest is $105,040, and we have that covered right here. The lowest they didn't give us, but they give us the range, which is, means the highest minus the lowest. Okay, so what about, what about, um, can the answer be 27 though? Can the answer be 27? Can the lowest be $27.50? If we take $27.50 from 105, would we get $27.50? Is that possible? No, that's not possible either. That's too low. $105.40. If you take $27, you can round it up to 30. If you take 30 from $100, you're going to get 70, right? So that can't be either. 
So anyways, and so let's try though. Let's take, let's use a hundred and five dollars. Hundred and five dollars and forty cents. All right. It's a, it's a nice, easy question. So we have $105. Um, and let's say we want to, what you're gonna have to, what the easiest way to do is to subtract the range, All right? Um, is to subtract the range from the highest, All right? Subtract the range from the highest to get the lowest. So if you, if you wanna understand what I'm saying here, look at it. Range equals highest minus lowest, right? You can do some algebra here. If I carry the L over, the minus L over the other side, it becomes positive L, ain't it? And if I carry the R over on the other side, the R becomes minus R. So the lowest will be equal to the highest minus the range. Okay? So the, right? So let me just write it here because I just forget you guys can see on the right hand side here. So the highest minus the lowest, sorry, the highest minus the range will give us the lowest. So that's, that's going to be, what's the highest? Is $105.40 minus $27.50. And that, that should make sense too, right? If we subtract, would, which one of those will be the answer? We already eliminated A and D. If we subtract zero from zero, we're going to get zero. So right away, we know that C can't work, can't it? Because if you subtract zero from zero, you're gonna get zero. Not, you don't end with, this, the not, C ends with a five, right? $66.45. When we subtract the zero from zero, we didn't get a five. So we're definitely gonna get $77.90. Um, and so you're right, the B is the answer. But let's try though, five from four, we can't borrow one. We get a four year carry here. Five from 14, you get nine. And already we can see we get the 90 cents that we're looking for. Now guys, if you're working this out and you end up with 90 cents, when you look at the options, the only one that has 90 cents is gonna be B. So you, didn't have to, you don't even have to go further. But I will in this case, right? Just to show you. So seven from four, we can't. Borrow one from zero, we can't. Borrow one from the one. Put it by the, put it by the, the zero, that's 10. Borrow one from that, give us nine. Carry the one, that's 14. Seven from 14, give us seven. And two from nine, give us seven. And so we get $77.90. All right. And this one is very easy too. And if you did done some stats um, on grouping, right? Group frequency um, tables, then you'll know about the lower limit and upper limit, as well as the lower boundary and upper boundary, right? So looking at question, um, 49, which one of these would you say is the answer? Hopefully you guys can see the words clear enough. And for the video though, I will just delete the long pause. All right, so let's start. Now, these are called class intervals. The 10 to 14, Right, leaves have in length centimeters 10 to 14. That's we have three of them, frequency three. That means we have three leaves in the range 10 to 14, or the class interval 10 to 14. We have eight leaves. That's the frequency. We have eight leaves in the the range 15 centimeters to 19 centimeters. That's what he's basically saying, right? Cabbage leaves basically. They were measured to the nearest centimeters. When, when I say nearest centimeters, it means that if you find one fall in the range of like well, one of them is like 14.2 centimeters they would round that to 14 14.5 where would that go though where would the 14.5 go so that's what they're asking you here in in 49 basically come in the, the, the leaves they were rounded to the nearest centimeter so if one measure 15.2 they're gonna they round it off to 15 15.5 or 19.5 and so forth all right, so we, we call this class interval, right? The class interval. And this is called the lower limit. And this one is called the what? Anybody knows? Anybody? One, two, three. Okay, the upper, the upper limit, the upper limit. So the lower limit and the upper limit, right? 
we also have what we call boundary. And the boundary basically is taking the previous class, but I'm not going to do it that way. I'm going to just tell it to subtract 0 0.5 from the lower limit to get the lower boundary. All right? That's not the way we typically explain it, but to me, that's way faster. T t subtract 0 0.5 from 10, the lower limit, and you get what's called the lower boundary, which is going to be 9.5. Right? That's called the lower boundary. And I'm going to add 0.5 to the 14. So that's be 14.5. That's called the upper boundary. And it would make sense, right? It's like rounding off. So while we have the class limit going from 10 to 14 centimeters, all right, we, we want to account for those, th those measurements that are a little less and a little more. So we go from 9.5 to 14.5. All right, that be, that's going to be the range that we're going to use from 19.5 to 14.5. Okay, and typically we will use 9.5. 9.5 will be rounded off to what? To 10. But we'll say anything less than 14.5. Anything less than 14.5 will we'll go in, into this class interval 10 to 14. So if we have a leaf that is 9.5 centimeters, it will go in the, in the class interval 10 to 14, obviously, because 9.5 rounded off to the nearest centimeter, it will be 10. If you have 9.6, that still will be 10. 9.7, still 10. All right, and so it goes up to 14.5, but we would not include 14.5, but anything less than 14.5, we'll, we'll actually put it in this class interval, 10 to 14. And so the answer is gonna be, which one of these? All right, the beginning and end points. It will be C. C? Yeah, C. Why C? Because we're saying if a leaf measures 9.5 and we round it, we're, we, we, would, we would not put it in 15 to, six, 15 to 19. Neither would we put it in the previous one. We wouldn't put it in the other. Well, there's no previous one there, right? But the idea is we will put it in um, 10 to 14 if it measures 9.5. Okay, if it's measured 14.5, we would put it in 15 to 19. But the idea is we'll still categorize this from 9.5 to 14.5 as the boundary. So any measurement in between those two figures, including 9.5, but not 14.5, we'll put it in the category 10 to 14. It's just like the 15 to 19 as well, right? What measurements will be used? 14.5, right? To what? 19.5. Those are the boundaries. 14.5 to 19.5. I notice that we have a 14.5 again, just like with the previous one. So the 14.5 is the is the upper boundary for the 10 to 14 category. And then the and the 14.5 is the lower boundary for the 15 to 19 category. But if a leaf truly measures 14.5, when we round it off, it's gonna be 15. I'm just giving some added information. Okay, so C is the answer. It is telling you that any, if you have a leaf measuring from 9.5, right, and anything up to less than 14.5, we're going to we're gonna use the category or the class interval 10 to 14. All right, hope that makes sense. If okay, so because, because it said nearest, um, because it said nearest centimeter, that's why I said D. Oh, no, no, no. What they're saying that the leaves, what they, when, they, when they're carrying out the survey, Right, whoever carrying out the survey, they didn't take they, they look at those those leaves that were that had fractional parts, the decimal parts, so they round them off. Okay? So if a leaf measured nine point nine point five, they'll put it in the, this category here, ten to fourteen. So the beginning the beginning okay. the, the beginning point will not is not really ten point ten is not ten. Alright? If it's ten if a leaf measures nine point five, then probably we'll just throw away that leaf, they would not even record it. But they did record those leaves that measured 9.5, 9.6, and so forth. But they round them off and call them 10, for instance, right? So the beginning is really 9.5 up to 14.5. Because if you said if you use 10, do you look at the options. Let's we can we can try to make some sense of it as well too. Look at the um look at the the option that has 10. Even if you think of it, okay, 10 is the end point. Look at the next number. The next number is 15, isn't it? 
And 15 is not in the category 10 to 14. 15 belongs to the other one, 15 to 19. So that perhaps will be a little bit confusing to you, right? So the end point, the okay, big, okay. yeah. Okay, so I think they're choosing their words, though. They probably could actually boundaries, right? So they, they basically what they did is interchange the word boundaries here. The lower boundary is the beginning, and the, and the upper boundary will be the end point. So they're referring to the boundaries here. And boundaries, you're looking at the point fives. Point five less and point five more for the upper and lower, for the lower and upper, respectively. Okay, 50. Uh, a boy throws a die twice. Now, this is a very interesting one, right? Um, what is the probability that he will get a 3 followed by an even number? Now, we were looking at the whole concept Would that... It be B? B? Which one? B? B as in boy. Okay. It would not be B if my, if my memory serves me right. But explain to me how you got, you got B. I'm more interested in the process than just the answer. So, was, okay, so go ahead. Okay, so um, in with the die, it would have up to number six. Very good. A fear die will have six faces. And, yes, and out of the six numbers, it would have three even numbers. Right. Yeah. Plus the number three, so I would say one. They have one times the auto four. One of the that's why I said that one. Okay, understand. So, the three even plus the three. Yeah. so you're saying that they are okay, so let's look at it. Let's look at it. So let's take it step by step. Do you know what it says? What is the probability that he will get a three followed by an even number? So he threw the dice the die once. Right? So we have two events. So we really have two events occurring. Right? We have two events occurring. The first event, right? We're looking at the we're looking at what? What the probability that you will get a three for the first event? Followed meaning right after. What is the probability that you will get an even number right after? So we have so for event one, the first event, and then we have event two, the second event. Let's check the probabilities. The probability so the probab I should see now. <laughs> okay. I think okay. Now here's what for independent. Like like right, but here's the thing though. Let me give you a little concept, right? For independent event, right? They happen separately, right? They happen separately. He threw the die once, then he threw the die again. So that's two separate events. We call it independent events, right? What we will do with those, we'll actually multiply the the probabilities. Okay, we'll multiply the okay. probabilities. Yeah. Okay. So we're gonna take the probability for event one and event two, and we're gonna multiply them. So you think you wanna go again with the the answer? So the answer there would not be well. Let me not see. I need to multiply it first before. All right. So for event one, what's the probability for event one? So we're focusing on getting a three, right? How many threes do we have on a fear die? How many threes do we have on a fear die? We have the numbers one, two, three, four, five, and six. How many how many threes we have? On a die. One. One. Yeah. Because one face has one, the next next face has two, three, four, five, and then six, right? So only one, three we have out of how many how many um numbers? Six numbers. Okay, so let's look at the probability for event two now. Event two now, so the event one is about the probability of getting a three. Event two now is the probability of getting what? An even number. An even number. Right, so we have to look at the, the amount of even number we have on a fear die. How many even numbers we have on a fear die? We have one, the number one. We have the number two, three, three four, five, and six. How many even numbers do we have there? One, two, three. So we have three even numbers. Right? We have three even numbers. Out of how many numbers? We have three even numbers six. out of six numbers. Right. So the probability of getting an sorry, the probability of getting a three 
is 1 out of 6. So we have 1, 3 out of 6 numbers. And the probability of getting an even number will be 3 out of 6 because we have 3 even numbers out of 6 numbers. And then we multiply those because we have two separate events. He, threw the, he didn't throw the, the two the die at the same time. He threw them one after the next. All right. So we have to we multiply those. Okay. Remember that concept. All right. So I'm going to take off these. All right. So we're going to do the calculation. And I probably should be doing the calculation on the other side, but I forgot. Let's look at this. Um, let's multiply those guys. By the way, one over six. I can simplify three over, over six. And what is three out of six simplified? When we simplify this, what do we get? A half. A half, yeah. One over three? N not one over three. Not one over three. Three goes into self once, and three goes into one six. Over two, sorry, yeah. One over two. Just be careful with the three and the two when it comes to six, right? <laughs> Sometimes, you know, we make mistakes with those. Three, two, and six. Right? So three goes into six twice. And nine as well, so we want to be careful with that. No, so now, we got, now with multiplication, what do we do? We multiply straight across, right? When we can simplify a numerator with a denominator, we simplify it, we multiply across. So it be one times one. And six times two. And so the answer is what? A. A. That's what I have. Right, good. So so we get it, right? Okay, awesome, awesome. Alright, so we're almost done. Let's look at this one. The pie chart above shows the preference in drinks of a group of students. If 12 students prefer chocolate, if 12 students prefer chocolate, then the total number of students in the group is, all right, so this, we need at least, let's take 30 seconds to think about this one. Anybody have the answers, the answer already? If not, then let's take about, um, yeah, take 60 seconds to think about it. I'm sure somebody will get the answer before then. But don't guess. Make sure you come up with an answer. Remember, there are 12 students preferring what? Chocolate. 12 students. So they're giving us something to work with. 12 students prefer chocolate. So you look at chocolate and you put your 12 there. So that, so that little sector there, this sector represents 12 students. All right. All right. I think I I think I have the answer, just by um looking at the angle. So you see some key things there, right? They give us twelve students. The next thing you should be looking at, hopefully, would be the angle right here. It's a different color. Cause those are the only numbers to work with, right? One hundred twenty degrees. And one more thing I'm seeing is angle on a straight line. I'm seeing that concept as well, angle on a straight line. You can you can give me the answer once you have it. Anybody? Right, so I'm feeling I have a feeling this is gonna be the answer. I could be wrong. I haven't completely worked it out, but just by an overall analysis in my head I could think that this is gonna be the answer. All right, but let's work on it then. Nobody's responding. Yes, fifty one is uh B. That's what I have. Okay, you want to tell me how you got your answer? Okay, um, so like you have 12 chocolates. Yeah. So I said the, um, or the orange will be six because it's half of the chocolate. But wait, wait, wait. And then <laughs> wait. How, how, how you know it's half of it? But how you know that? No, we can't make that assumption like that. Yes, well, I, well, that's what I, that's what I did, and I got the. So if I'm wrong, then I am. <laughs> you, you know, it's some. Yeah, you see, sometimes what they do, they, 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 
They make the numbers so far apart that it's easy to get the right answer by doing that. But when they put the answers really close, then that's then, then we have a problem. You understand? So what I fine. But here's the thing. They want you to use the numbers that they give you. But this could this might not necessarily be a half, it might be a little bit more than a half. Alright? But it's what but that's a good that's a good effort though. That's a good effort. Um if if it works then that's good. But it's just that sometimes they may not um necessarily um it It's just that sometimes they may not necessarily um have the numbers that far apart and then that could lead to trouble. Right, so but let's look at it though. Alright? Look at the straight line here. Alright, I'm gonna draw the same straight line, which is with A and C. Alright, let's make let's look at it. This is A and this is C. Alright, and then we're going to let me see if I can I forgot where I reproduced that. It's gonna be down like that, or it's going up. It looks like it's going down, yeah. Alright. Uh, still, I think it's going to be a little bit more up. Just a little bit more up. All right. I might be off, but don't forget. Forgive me. Now, if this is 120 here, guys, if this is 120, right? What, what angle is this right here? What angle is this remaining one? Anybody? Sixty is correct. Sixty is correct, because this is basically what Th this angle here. If this is the center, what we have here is a semicircle, right? And a semicircle is half of three sixty, right? In terms of an angle, it's a one hundred and eighty degrees. Another way of saying that is an angle on a straight line. We have an angle on a straight line, right? And the angle on a straight line would be one hundred and eighty. Well, the sum of angles on a straight line will give you one hundred and eighty degrees, providing that those angles share a common point. And all these angles here in the circle are, you know, sharing a common point. So this would actually be 60 degrees. Everybody get that so far? So 12, in other words, so 12, when you think about it, guys, when you think about it, 12 students, right, represented by an angle of 60 degrees, right? And the complete circle is how much? What's the degrees of complete circle? What degree is a complete circle, guys? 360. Right. So how do we get 360? What, what number do we multiply 60 by to get 360? This is just one approach. That just came to my mind while I was explaining. I had a different approach to explain to you, but this just came to my mind. All right. So 12, this is actually um, 60 degrees, which is 12 students. But I'm asking you, what number would you multiply 60 by to get 360? Well, look at the 6 and, th and 36. What number we multiply 6 by to get 36? 6 what give us 36? 6 times 6, right? 6 times 6 is 36. So 6 times 60 give you the full circle. Yeah? And you can multiply this 12 over here by 6 as well. And 6 times 12 is 72. The answer we're looking for. Alright? That's it. So 12 students will represent the complete circle of 360 degrees. Because if we go, again, we have 120 degree here, 120 degrees. If we go around it, it's 180. So that's the chocolate section, the sector, has an angle of 60 degrees. So 60 degrees are, is representing 12 students. And so we can just do that. Now here's another approach, guys. Here's another approach. I think you're going to like this approach. The one I had in, you know, originally before that came to my mind. All right. Look at it this way. So we have 60, we have, we have 60 here, obviously, right? Because 60 plus 120 will give us 180. Bear that in mind. Now, if 60 give you 12, this 120 can be divided into two equal parts, ain't it? This 120 can be divided into two, into two what? Into two, into two. In the two um, 60s. Everybody, anybody agree with that? Everybody agree with that? Yes. Okay, good. It makes sense, right? 
you have 120. If you cut it into two parts, two equal parts, then this will be 60 degree over here plus another 60 over here. Sorry, 60, 60. So that means this will be 12 students as well, and this will be 12 students, ain't it? All right, so how much we have on this side going from A to C, this half? How many do we have there? 12 plus 12 plus 12, right? How much is that? How many students do we have in um, in this section? This thing keeps shaking up. Oh boy. Yeah, how many, how many students do we have in this section, guys? 36, right? We add 12 plus 12 plus 12, and we get 36, right? So 12 plus 12 plus 12. Give us 36. So if if a half is, tw is 36, the other half must be what as well? If this half over here is 36, 36. Exactly. If this half over here have 36 students, right? Then the other half must have the same amount. Logically, right? So 36 students, the other half will be 36. And what's 36 plus 36? Yeah, 72. And that's it. Easy stuff. All right. Again, remember, you're not going to take this long, right? Because I'm just explaining and asking questions. But you should, it will take you, once you get the idea, it will take you about 20 seconds or so. Whichever approach you choose to. If those questions come again, you'll definitely finish them quickly. Um, now, here's a concept now, right, guys? When you have two straight lines crossing each other, the opposite angles, well, we call them vertical angles or vertically opposite angles. Not just opposite, but we say vertically opposite angles. So if you, you can actually, if you put your hands like that, so imagine we have some somebody here, right? So we have Miss Perry, and she crossed her hands like that, right? She crossed her hands like that, like that, right? Even though this part is wider than this part here, this part, this angle here, and the angle underneath will be the same measure. And the angles at the side will actually have the same measure as well. You can try it with your hands and see. If you cross them like an X, you can see the, the vertically opposite angles will have this look the same angles basically. So this angle here, right? This angle going from D to B to C. We call it, I'm talking about this angle here. This angle here. Angle DBC going from D to B to C will be the same as this angle down here. Right? We call them what? Vertically opposite angles. This angle is angle D B C going from D to B to C. The angle down here is angle, we can start from A, A, B, E. All these angles will have B in the center. And those two angles are equal because they are vertically opposite angles. But you know something else with vertically opposite angles, guys? We can also see angles on a straight line. For instance, when we look at this here, this angle that's here as, as 58 degrees, right? Do you notice that what? It has a, we can say there's a, there's a straight line, angle on a straight line right there. Let's call it X. Angle X plus 58 should give you 180 degrees. Why? Because these are angles on a straight line. We call them adjacent angles really because they're next to each other on a straight line. Right? Adjacent angles on a straight line. So X plus 58 will be 180. And if we call this Y here and call this Z, then obviously X plus Y plus Z will be equal to what? Y plus Z will also equal to 180 degrees because they're they actually form a semicircle in other words angles on a straight line or adjacent angles on a straight line When you put the 180 to what to the 180 together you get 360 a complete circle and we see that makes sense, right? The answer for 52 What is the answer for 52? I'm gonna give you 30 seconds. So you see the trick guys they gave you the you know they gave you <laughs> This you know the the X shape 
and quickly in your mind you first the first thing comes to your mind oh vertically opposite angles they're equal and you just select 58 right away but they might not be testing you on vertically opposite angles you see so remember the multiple choice they, they, they don't, they're not meant to be that straightforward so you have to just look again yeah right which 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 angle is expected is expected to be 58 let me let me number them one two three and four angle one angle two angle three or angle four which angle should be 58 three. angle three because they are vertically opposite very good but are they asking about angle three no you have to look at look what where a b e is right and that's another thing too you know how do we read this thing called a b angle a b e angle x y z and so forth All right so if i have two lines like if i have a line like this and a line like that let's say we call this one up here p the one at the center there let's call that r and then call the one here y then we hope we read it by starting from p go to r and then to y or we can go from y then r then p all right so we start at the end, right? We start at the end of the lines and then go to the vertex. The vertex is where the two straight line meet. We call it a vertex. So R is a vertex. So we start from P. So we're going to say angle P, R, Y. Okay. We start from the end point, go to uh, an end point, I should say. Start from an end point. We go to the vertex where the two straight line meet and then go at the other end point. So we can also start at angle Y. Then go to the, the vertex R, where the two straight line meet, and then to P. Those These two angles are basically the same thing, right? They're the same angle, angle in, in other words. So now, if we're talking about angle A, B, E, let's identify angle A, B, E. So that's the, th the thing. We want to identify angle A, B. Which angle are they talking about? Well, I'll label them. Which angle is angle A, B, E? Is angle 1, 2, 3, or 4? Which one is angle A, B, E? Angle A, B, E. Is it one? Angle one, angle two, angle three, angle four? four. Angle four. Angle four. You're right. Angle four. All right. Is it the, is in the example I'm using here? With P, R, P, R, Y, and so forth. That that is base. These are basically line segments. But the X that they give you, those are actually lines. So you see arrows at the end? So what they basically did was actually put... um some dots there and 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 call those um a d c and e because the lines themselves go on forever in the, in the directions that you're seeing the arrows so they don't put the, they don't put the they don't put the labeling at the end of the arrow they put it somewhere along the line itself so again let me show what i'm talking about right here that's a center that's b and right here that's e so the angle it's so if we go if we're going from a i'm just explaining that so to anybody that probably is not sure we're going from a to b and then to down to to c um e so we talk about this angle right here okay and that angle itself and that angle itself makes what what angle with um 58 it's a what angle on a what is it is it vertically opposite or is angle on a straight line which one is it What's the relationship between that angle and, and 58? Angle on a straight line or vertically opposite? Opposite. Uh, is it vertically opposite or angle on a straight line? Fifty-eight degrees. It's actually angle on a straight line, okay? So this would be the straight line here. This would be the straight line here. we have 58 degrees and we have this angle here okay so angle 4 is the angle we're looking for angle 4 plus 50 angle 1 which is 58 those two angles are angles on a straight line so basically we're gonna have 100 180 degrees minus 58 degrees and that will give us our answer they form a straight line or a semicircle so 8 from 0, you borrow 1 from 8, put it by the 0, that's 10. 8 from 10 is 2. 
5 from 7 is 2. And we have nothing below 1. So that's what the 1. So that's 122. The answer is C. All right. So that was clear, guys. Uh huh? Okay. <laughs> All right. Here, here what they're asking now, no? You see the, what we just discussed? This is the reason why it's so important that we kind of have these kind of discussion on one question. Because they may ask a question afterwards or even on a different paper, right? Based on what we discussed. Look at this. Not expecting this question, they ask which of the following angles are equal? Realize we discussed it already. All right. So when we look at it, angle. You said D, right? Let's look at D. Angle A, B, D. So you go from A to B to D. So A, B, D is actually 58, right? Everybody agree with that? Yes. No. Yes. Yeah, angle A, B, D. Yes, yes. Yeah, angle A, B, D is actually the 58. Right, we're going from A to B to D. That's actually angle 58. And it says it's actually the only angle is equal to this one on the on the vertically opposite side. This one here. Going right across to it. Over there, right? That angle is right here. That's the angle that's equal to. Those angles are vertically opposite. And so that's uh, that's angle C B E. So that's correct. That's 100 percent correct. That's angle CBE. So you're correct. D is the answer. All right, this one is very easy. Translation. Uh, the translation by which AB, right? The translation by which the line AB is mapped onto A prime, B prime is represented by what? So let's, let's look at point A. You can write point A as 2, 5, right? It actually goes to A prime. What's A prime? four six we have the object and then we have the image so what do we add what do we add to it to actually get it to be four six what do we add to two to get four and what do we add to five to get six we basically one. right we basically subtract ain't it one, one. We basically we subtract right two from four is two that means two plus two is four 5 from 6 is 1, that means 5 plus 1 is 6. So it's 2, 1. That's it. That's the translation we're looking for. Alright? So if you want to understand that a little better, I can just write it as this. The object plus the translation will equal to the image. The object plus the translation is equal to the image. T for the translation be vector, basically. So the object is 2, 5. When we add the translation 2, 1 to it, we get 4, 6. And we can try it with B and see if we get the same thing, right? What's B? The object B plus the translation give us the image of B. Um, B is what? B is 5, is that 5, 7? 5, 7 plus the translation equals the image of 7, 8. 5, five plus what give us 7? We simply subtract 5 from 7 to get 2, which means 5 plus 2 is 7. 7 plus what give us 8? So we subtract 7 from 8 and we get 1, which means 7 plus 1 is 8. So again, we see we see we have the same translation two one. So that's the translation two one. So the answer is D. All right, that should be clear. Let's move on. So I said these are very easy. Um, <clears throat> number fifty eight. Let's get number fifty eight. It says here the triangle element. So we're looking at this guy over here above is rotated through an angle of 90 degrees in a clockwise direction about L. So, so we're going to actually, let's think about it. Imagine you have this shape here, triangle LMN, LMN on a, on, on a book or something. And you, and you put the, you put the pin through, through L and then you rotate it 90 degrees, a 90 degree, 90 degree angle. And it says clockwise, isn't it? So clockwise means we go in which direction? Are we going this direction or this direction? Um, let me call the first one A or B. Which direction are we going? Are we going the A direction or B direction for clockwise? 
about L meaning that we actually pin the triangle at L and then rotate the other part around L. So I'm asking the question, are we going A direction for clockwise or B direction for clockwise? When you think about clockwise, think about the, the movement of the hand of a clock. Right? The hands of a clock move in what it's direction? B. B. Very good. That's clockwise in B direction. Look at the hand of a clock. It's moving in B direction. All right? So if we have a shape like this, guys, L, and then the, and this is M, and this is N, right? 90 degree here. Remember, we're, we're going to put a point. We're going to put a pin right here, right? And we're going to rotate this shape here. We're going to rotate that shape clockwise meaning going that direction so that means lm if it's a 90 degrees I mean lm let's draw the new shape so we're gonna l is still gonna be the same, in the same position l will still be in the same position since we're rotating it about l but m will be where 90 degrees so we're gonna put it this way right let me see gonna be like that 90 degrees that means um m is gonna be somewhere here if it's 90 degrees to its original position, all right? It's gonna be 90 degrees to its original position. And and what about um, N? The line LN is gonna go this way. Make sense? It's gonna be 90 degrees to its original position, like that. That's 90 degrees to its original position. So N is gonna be right here like that, all right? Um, right, and then we can actually just close it up like this. So we have, we call it M prime and N prime. So that will be the, the way the triangle will actually be. So which one of those we should have? Is it going to be A, B, C, or D? Which one looks like that? Remember if we rotate in around L, L should not move. Yeah, so which one is going to be the answer? Which one looks like what the shape that I have? Well, it's definitely not C or D. Let's look at A and B. Which one of them is the answer, guys? Look at what I have. A? Compare. Look at A and look at B. Which one looks like the one I have? I mean, A? no, this is what I have here now. Look. You're saying A looks like what I have? No, 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 no. Are you not seeing it? The right angle is at M. B, 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 B. Right. It's B. Yes, yeah, so B is the answer. All right. If we if we rotate in about L, L should not move. Right. And if you look at this, L L moved. L actually moved in these. So these can't be correct. Because L should not move. L if we rotate it around L, that means we can keep it fixed at L. Alright, it's like the center of a clock. Right? This hand is on twelve. This hand is on three. Right? And the center of a clock, let's call it center O. If the when the hand when the hands move, the center remains in the same position. Right? The center doesn't move. So our center is really L. Because we're rotating it around L. We're rotating we're rotating the lines around the center. The center point is L. So L should not move. So that's why C and D are basically out. Because you see where L is? For both C and D? Here and here. That doesn't make sense. When we look at the original image. Or well, I should say the original shape, right? We leave an image for um, the result. This thing keep moving up. Okay, that's basically that. Okay, and we can basically see that the answer is either gonna be A or B. If you say A, it's not gonna be correct because when you look at when you look at um L M. Look at look at the original shape. We look at L M. All right. LM is now here, down here like that. So if I do something like this, let's, let, I'm going to focus on LM right here. If I carry LM just in the same position like that, right? It doesn't look like 90. That's not 90 degrees. 90 degrees should come 
right? 90 degrees would be somewhere about um, about here, right? And by the way, that's not the one I would use because that one is slanted. That one would be much more difficult. But the fact is, I would basically look look at the the horizontal one. Look at LM. LM, LN, sorry. Look at LN. LN is horizontal. And so if you rotate it 90 degrees, obviously, where would it be? This is L and this is N. We're not going to move L. We're going to move, going to shift the point N 90 degrees. Right? So this line LN is going to rotate about L. 90 degrees clockwise so obviously it's going to move this direction like that that's 90 degrees so so n is going to be here n prime that is n prime in the image of n that's 90 degrees right so you're looking for the one where n prime will be 90 degrees to n and it has to be what it has to be b okay if you look at a why is a wrong again let me show you another point why A is wrong. Look at the original shape. Do you see that th that N did not move either? Look at N. Well, it probably moved, but probably moved oh, 360 degrees. Right? What that that what it basically did basically flipped, right? It basically reflected. This is basically a reflection in the line LN. Because LN did not move at all. L, 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 and it's still right here as the image. So that was basically a flip. Or what should I say? A reflection in the line LN. That's not a rotation. This one is a rotation of N. N was right. N was the line LN was there. And it rotated downwards 90 degrees. Okay? So that would that's why we know that B is the answer. Hopefully that was clear. Let's look at the various ways we can actually come up with the right answer. You'll choose one when you put in your exam, right? Let's look at this one. We're almost there. How much more we have? 40, 50. Okay, I'm going to try to make this quick. Okay, it says here, the point A is shown in the above diagram. What are the coordinates of the reflection of A in the y-axis? So, guys, we should, what's the coordinates of A in the y-axis? A reflection of the y-axis. So, what you need to do here is identify the y-axis. This is the y-axis, right? Three. Well, well, coordinates. So if you reflect this, well, four three is the coordinates of a. But when you reflect it, if you if you put a mirror here, if you put a mirror there, right, it will be seen somewhere where, over this side, right? Where over there a will actually be seen. Now here's the thing about reflection. The ob object and image are equal distance away from each other in the mirror line. So think now where a, the image of A would be located if the mirror line is the y-axis. Where would you actually put? Negative 4, 3. Negative 4, 3. Yes. It, I think yeah. that's the case. Let's, well, let's see. Let's count from A. Go straight to the mirror line. 1, 2, Three, four units, right? So let's count now away from the mirror line. One, two, three, four. We'll be right here. And so that will be A prime. And what, what would we coordinate? You go down to the x-axis, that's negative four. And on the y coordinate, and on the y-axis, that will be three. So be negative four, three is correct. Very good. Negative four, that's A. Anybody has had that answer? Anyone else? Yeah. Okay. All right. Awesome. Yes, I have it. Okay. Let's look at this one, guys. These ones are the easy ones, so we just want to move away quickly, right? 57. We have three more to go. All right. So we're almost there. In the figure above, the line CD is the, is the image of AB. The line CD is the image of AB. We can see that, right? The line CD is the image of AB. So we can... Notice that they call C first, C, D, the image of A, B. Okay, same orientation mean that, that it's like they, it's just like they, you just shift the graph, graph paper behind of them and one become the other. That's not the case there. So that's definitely not a translation. Translation is just a shift without, without changing the orientation. We don't spin it. 
we just keep the same orientation and just shift it in different directions, right? So that's definitely not a translation. So we know that C is out. Enlargement. That one is tempting. Okay, see? And enlargement of, of one is gonna be the same size, right? But negative meaning is gonna be it's gonna it's gonna be inverted, right? Upside it down. So this one is gonna be out as well. Is the rotation of ninety degrees? No. If it's rotated of ninety degrees, uh oh. well at center it's a rotation of ninety. Yeah. Oh no problem. So Sorry, we have, good night. yeah. I will, I'll, you know, yeah. But you should get the others, man. But I'm gonna send a video of it. But I'm gonna just cut out the the weight and so forth, right? All right, good night. Uh, fifty-seven D. A reflection in the y-axis. Which one do you think it is? Is it a reflection in the y-axis? A rotation about ninety degrees. A reflection. Yeah. Um, in the right angle triangle up above tan theta is which one of these is tan theta tan theta anybody remember how to do this one anybody you see the thing is on the on the on the formula sheet you should you should have the formula right um sine will be opposite over um hypotenuse cosine so don't get con confused and say why well, don't remember the formula it's right there on the formula sheet just turn the page I don't know in your computer-based exam how that how that is set up. I think you have to just go to the beginning or something, right? You guys can tell me. Um, cosine adjacent over hypotenuse, right? Ka. So it's so. Ka. Toa, right? And they ask about tangent. So we're looking at Toa. We're looking for the opposite over the adjacent. O over A. The tan theta. Okay, which one is which one is the hypotenuse? Tell me. What do you remember about the hypotenuse? Oh, the, one the, right the one that's opposite the right angle, right? Remember that, guys. So identify the right angle, please. Okay. Think of the right angle as a human being there, right? Some some human being there, and they have the legs standing on the hypotenuse. Okay, so you have a little human there, standing on the what? The hypotenuse. So what's the hypotenuse? To measure 13, right? This is going to be the hypotenuse. Which side is the opposite? They're definitely going to give you, they're definitely going to give you these, right? We know they're going to give you these at the end of the, of your, um, multiple choice exam. So you need to go over these little concepts, right? Which one is opposite? And when we say opposite, we're talking about opposite and adjacent are always in relation to not the right angle, but the acute angle theta. So look at up, look at theta, and opposite is opposite theta. So just like opposite of the right angle, uh, right angle symbol, we have the hypotenuse. Opposite of theta, we don't call it hypotenuse, although it's opposite, just like opposite of the right angle is hypotenuse. Opposite of theta doesn't have a special name. We just call it opposite. All right. In fact, we can say opposite theta if we want to. But opposite the right angle has a special name, hypotenuse. All right, and adjacent obviously is the one that is next to to, to theta, the, that that angle that looked like zero. R O. Right, so this angle, this side here is going to be our adjacent side. It's adjacent to theta, which is twelve. All right, so. So let, let's put let's put it in the perspective. The opposite is what measurement? What, what what measurement is the opposite? Everybody can tell me quickly? We just labeled them a while ago. What's the answer? A, B, C, or D? Tan theta is opposite over adjacent. That's very easy. It's right there on the graph. Huh? B. B five yeah, B. Five is the opposite. We can clearly see that. And 12 is the adjacent. So it's opposite over adjacent. If you don't remember the formula, it's right on the formula sheet of your exam. So you just label, just label, insert. So the answer is B. Very easy stuff, right?
as I'm saying, this last part is very easy, but if you don't know your thing, your, your theorems are your, your... So angle of depression basically is the this angle right here. Depressed means going down, right? So we, we, when we talk about angle of depression and, and elevation, we usually talk about these guys. Think about a Z angle. So let's say we have a Z here. This angle down here, let's call it um, alpha. This angle up here, let's call it beta. Alpha is called the angle of elevation. I could use the, I didn't have to say alpha and I could use a different letter. Whatever angle it is down there, it's elevating, in other words, going up. The one at the top is depressing, going down. Think about depressing if you like when you feel. And when you say from, look at where you say from. Typically, where it has the from is where the angle is located at. From Z. So we're at Z, we're going to have the angle of depression being um, 30 degrees. Angle of depression. My bad in spelling there. All right. Um, the angle of elevation now. Obviously, can we see the Z? Can you guys see the Z? The Z is right there. Yes. Oh, right. This is a Z. I don't mean the letter Z. Um, right, right there. But the Z in terms of the design here. So this, so this is gonna be my angle, my other, my other angle. Right. And it's also thirty degrees. Why is it thirty degrees though? Because they're alternate angles. The angle of elevation and depression are equal. Right. So, the, right, guys. So if that's 30 for the depression, the angle of elevation is also 30. Okay, so that's that. Easy, easy stuff. Just have to memorize that concept. Once it's find a Z, in other words, two lines that are parallel. Here we have a line that's parallel to the next one. And this is called my transversal. The alternate angles are equal. Next, what's next? All right, what is what is it here? If the X is, if X is, um, X, y, X is 10 centimeters from Y. So yeah, so this length here is 10 meters. I, I can see that on the graph, the, the drawing I should say. All right, that's already there on the drawing. Um, the height of Y is Z. So we want to find the height of Y is Z. So this is quite easy. This is a height going from Y to Z. That's the height that we're looking for. So basically guys, all you need to do is look at the fact that we have a right angle triangle, all right? So if you want to sketch it, no problem. Or if you can just draw it in that, no problem. Here we have a 30 degrees angle. We have a right angle right here. We have 10 meters right here. Now let me ask a question. Which side is the 10 meters? Is it the adjacent? Is it the opposite? Is it the hypotenuse? Which one is it? Adjacent. Adj yeah, adjacent. Adjacent always have the acute angle and the right angle on the same side. So when I spoke about theta, theta is the, the angle that's less than 90 degrees. So 30 there is acting as the angle theta. Okay, so in the formula, that theta is the acute angle that's less than 90. So this, so once we have the acute angle and the right angle on the same side, we call that the adjacent side. All right, remember the side that faces the right angle is the hypotenuse, but we're not using that because they didn't ask anything about that. They didn't give us the measurement for the hypotenuse, that's one. They did not give us this measurement. Neither did they ask us to find it. So we're not dealing with the hypotenuse. All right, so, which one, so basically, if I, the hypotenuse is out, then which, which, one of the, which one of those are we gonna remove? Which options are we gonna remove? Let's look at the formula again. So, Ka Toa. Which 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 one of these three trig ratios use um hypotenuse? Remember they did not give us the hypotenuse, neither did they ask us for it. So which one which ones are we gonna remove? Which one are we not using? Um cosine and sine. Yeah. We're not using sine or cosine. This question is not that hard that they're going to want us to find the hypotenuse before we can find anything else. No, they're not making it this difficult. It's a multiple choice. <laughs> right? Because they already give us so much in things about depression and stuff with it already. If it was a plain triangle, then fine. But with all of that they already gave us to read and interpret, they definitely just want us to just find the hypotenuse straightforward. In a straightforward way. Well, after we already figured that that angle I put there is 30 degrees as well. 
So obviously it's going to be tangent. And the only one there with tangent is what? Is B. B. Yeah. Right? It's not that they wanted to do it the way I'm showing you, you know. But, I mean, with common sense, we know that it's the hypotenuse. Wait a second there. Okay. So you get confused there. <laughs> that H I have there is half a height. Be careful of that. Because I, I, I just thought in my mind, wait, is that hypotenuse? No, that's not hypotenuse. That's just the height. That's just the height we're trying to find. YZ. I'm going to just put YZ there. Because that, that just, you know, tricked me there a while ago, boy. So opposite the, opposite the, the acute angle is what we call opposite. So this side is actually the opposite side. So you have to be careful of we labeling, right? That's the opposite side. That's the side we're trying to find. And the side we're given. So look at what they're asked to find. Opposite. All right? What you're given? Adjacent. That must be tangent. So how will we do this? We put tan. No, we, we already found our answer, but I'm just showing you how they end up with this as the answer, okay? We already found the answer. You're going to put tan, theta. And in this case, theta is 30 degrees. So I'm putting that in. Equal. Opposite. What's the opposite? YZ. That's Y over Z. Right? No. So, sorry. YZ. From point Y to point Z. That's a, the line YZ, which is the opposite side, right? So tan theta, theta being the, the acute angle, equal the opposite side, which is YZ, over the adjacent side, which is XY, or 10 meters. Now, if I want to find YZ, what do I do with those two values there? We multiply them. Okay. If I want to find YZ, I need to remove the 10 meters from the division. And when 10 meters go over to the other side, from division, it goes over as what? Multiplication. So that 10 meters there is going to become 10, right? They didn't put the M on it, right? So we, I guess we don't have to put that there. So you don't get confused in terms of the solution. That 10 is representing 10 meters, okay? Just keep that in mind. So... We're going to have the 10 goes over from division to multiplication. So 10 is now multiplying tan 30. And we can just simply write that as 10 tan 30 degrees. That's that's going to be the solution for YZ. So YZ, YZ will be isolated. YZ will be equal to tan 30 times 10 or 10 times tan 30. And we can clearly see that B is the answer. But remember, we found the answer a long time, right? Once we understand the setup, we just eliminated sine, cosine everywhere. Because sine and cosine use hypotenuse, which we're not looking at. Okay, so next one, the last one. This is very easy. Which one is the answer, guys? It's the final one. Which one is the which one is the answer? Yeah. That's true. But but think about the think about the concept of a triangle, guys. Um what are you saying, young what are you saying, sir? Yeah. Very good. So if we have three angles in a triangle, guys, um let's let's write it let's put it put it down. Huh? A B C and guys don't go doing all of this when you already know the answer already. If in the, if you were, I I like when you actually go through the multiple choice paper and actually do the calculations and all of that. So when you're in the exam, you remember going through all that processes and you already know the answer already. So just select the answer. But memorizing is a problem. Is where I have the problem. Like you just look at the the um question and you see it on YouTube or somewhere and you just memorize the answer. The challenge with that is that you, if you don't go through it, you can easily mix up the answers also if they change up the option change up the answers change up the numbers you can be in trouble so it's best to go through it so that when you see the question you know is that that's the identical question because you have gone through it all right so it's always good to do what i'm doing just go through think through and so forth and it will stick with you in memory um so we're gonna label triangle the triangle a b c put a b and c anywhere you want to but now we need to identify that a is x right the angle a has x degree in measurement, so we put that in. Um, angle B has 2x in measurement, put that in, right? And angle, they want us to find what? The size of angle uh, C? This is what we want to find right here. Now, as the young man said, right? Um, 
So three angles in a triangle. So they're testing your knowledge, you know. <laughs> right? They're testing your knowledge of about triangle. When you add up the three angles in a triangle, what you're, what you're supposed to get? As he said, when you add the three angles in a triangle, what's, what is the sum? Of the angle. 180 degrees. Very good. Now we've seen, the, it's either going to be one of these two, as you said. Right? But if you want to find any one, what do you do? You add the other two. You add the other two, right? So for instance, let's use some regular numbers because some people don't like to see algebra letters. If one is 60 and one is, let's say, 100, right? What angle is this one? Well, we, we, want, we want 180, isn't it? So we're going to add 100 plus 60 and get 160. And then say, how much more do we need? Well, we subtract the 180 from, one, we subtract 160 from 180 to get the, the remaining amount. The 20 degrees, right? So we're going to do the same thing here. To get the 160, we added the 60 plus the 100. Right? So the same thing we're going to do. We're going to add what? We're going to add x and what? And 2x. What's x plus 2x? 3x. And, what, and, that's, and that's the sum of the two angles. When we get that sum, what are we going to do? We're going to take it away from what? 180 to get the, to get the remaining amount, which, is, which will give us angle C. So the answer, like you said, is going to be C. Yeah. You saw that, guys? We add the two angles that we're given, x and 2x. So you don't have to even draw. Just look at it. We add the two angles we're given, x and 2x, and subtract it from 180 to get the remaining angle, angle C. That's it. All right? And so that's it for the for the lesson was it good yes it was all right yes, yes it was all right guys